All right, how many of y'all are hunters in here? All right, I got two. Yes. All right. So y'all probably got it a day before. Um, it's a quick overview right now because, you know, you can not go into details because of certain reasons because of squeamish people. But what? Um, if you're trying to get a deer, obviously the first thing you need to do is probably go hunting, right? Um, so my number one rule when you're uh, killing something is kill something that's worth killing. You don't want to kill a 50 pounds like little doe that you barely can get any meat off of. You want to kill something big where you actually can provide meat for your family. Um, and also, my dad always taught me the number one rule is don't kill nothing you're not going to eat. If you're going to kill it, you better eat it. So, because God gave us animals for a reason. We're allowed to kill them. We're allowed to eat them. But you just don't want to kill something just for fun. God wouldn't like that very much. Um, yeah. Uh, another really good rule when you're hunting is make sure you have a clean shot. Uh, I've heard people that find that as two different things. Is when you make sure you have a clean shot. Is I've heard people say, well, when it's behind trees and stuff, like that's not a clean shot. I'm like, that's not a clean shot. That's no shot for me personally. When I say I want a clean shot, is I want to hit the heart. I want to make sure I'm not gonna miss. Cause um, yeah, just me personally. Um. If you didn't have a clean shot, I've had to track a deer before just because I've shot it um, and it didn't die instantly and it just runs off. So you kind of have to track a little bit. Um, it's not only been 50-50 with me. I've had them drop instantly, but uh, also I've had to track them before, which isn't fun, but I've never really had to track them that far. And I've always had people like with me, so it was pretty easier. Um, then, after you find the deer, you need to make sure the deer is dead. Um, the number one myth is when you when the deer is dead and if you want to bleed it out, uh, people always say, cut the throat, cut the throat, cut the throat. Because when you cut the throat, it bleeds it out, right? Well, since the deer is dead, the heart doesn't pump the blood, correct? Because when you're dead, you don't get blood pumped. Same thing with the deer, right? So if you cut the throat, it might bleed a little bit, but it's not going to bleed it out because there's no blood getting pumped to it. Um, then, after you make sure it's dead normally, uh, my dad's just like tapped it in the head before, which, I mean, you can normally. But uh, that's what I do. People don't like that. Um, then after you do that, you need to bag it, which is, when you have your hunting's li uh, hunter's license, you get a certain amount of bags, and so it's basically checking in your deer. So uh, I forget what the rules is of how many bucks versus how many does you can get. You can only get so many bucks for so many does, and basically they do, do that so like a bunch of people don't kill the bucks, and then nobody kills does because it'd make the uh, like breeding unequal. So like for as many bucks as you kill, you got to kill so many does. Make it equal. Um, then, after you bag it, you want to gut it um, and field dress it as soon as possible. Um, back where I'm from, uh, I go. We uh, the place. Oh shoot! <laughs> the place where we hunt at. Um, I go with my brother-in-law a lot, and he has. Uh, I don't know if y'all know what Franklin County is, but we own. Uh, he owns, uh, his family owns half that, like a 1,600 acre farm. And they got a huge barn just for uh, gutting it. So we don't really field dress it. Normally when you field dress it, you don't get the perks of hanging it up and doing all that. You just got to lay it down where it's at. But I got the perks of going in the barn and uh, hanging it up. And so uh, we hang it up by its uh, hind legs. Um, I was doing some research, just curious what uh, other people's thoughts were, and Wiki says that you uh, put a rope around its neck and hang it up by its neck, which I'm like, 
I find it easier just to hang it by the legs just because you can put it on the hooks and pull it up. Oh, yeah, just don't, don't look now. Um, so that's the way that we hang it up. Um, then you need to cut the bottom side of the deer, which uh, the gut hooks is really, really cool thing because uh, you see the, just the hook right there? You just put it up at the bottom and you just kind of slide it up which uh, makes it a lot easier than using a traditional knife. So after you do that, uh, you need to remove the organs. Uh, um, then you need to remove the stomach. Obviously, I'm not going into full detail like where you did that and just for time's sake. But uh, then remove the abdomen and uh, if you do it properly, everything should just stay attached together and just it should just bail out basically. And you want to make sure you have a bucket there so you're just not bailing it out into the floor. Um, the next thing you need to do is remove the bladder, but be very careful when you're removing that. And then after that, remove the anus and the remaining intestines. And the hardest part I personally think is when you cut the sternum, which is in the middle of the rib cage, down there like that, because uh, you can't really use a traditional knife. You need to get like a saw or something. And then uh, we let it hang up in a kind of like, I wouldn't call it a freezer, but it's like enclosed and it st stays kind of cool in there. So we let it hang up in there and we let the blood sit in there and just like suck up the meat. So it uh, just gets, uh, gives it a little more taste and ages better. That's it. This stuff that is.